I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while it lasts us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on this show, I will be tasting just a glass of wine paired with cheese based on suggestions from the internet. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today on the show, we're going to be tasting Villa Borghetti Pinot Grigio Rosé. It is from the Veneta region of Italy. It's a Pinot Grigio, but it's also a rosé. So this is a little confusing, but when I did my research, what I found out was the way they make rosés is they take basically red wine grapes and leave the skin on for just a little bit, and that's what gives it that rosy color. Well, Pinot Grigio is not generally a red grape, but that's actually a fallacy. Even though it's a white wine most of the time, the grapes themselves can be anywhere from light green to kind of a purple color. And mostly they're in like this kind of gray pink color. So that's why we get a rosé from it. And you can see it's a very, very, very light rosé. It's not a very pinky rosé. It's very, very mild. But I'm really curious to see how it stacks up to the Pinot Grigio that we had the last episode and how it stacks up to other rosés that I've had. And I'm all over the place on rosés. I have found that I tend to like the ones that are a little bit more savory and have a little more gusto to them than the kind of lighter, paler ones. So this is a hybrid looking one, so we'll see what it tastes like. One of the things I learned about this wine, well, I learned very little about this wine to tell you the truth, but I did get it from Trader Joe's. From what I could find on the internet, it is imported by Trader Joe's through another company or it's one of the offshoots of Bronco Wine Company, the people who brought you two buck truck. So as far as I know, it is obviously a DOC wine, so it's made in Italy. I don't know if it's also available in Italy, but here in America, I think it comes strictly through Trader Joe's. So let's see, we're gonna look at the color first. I know, Can, okay, all right, you know what? It is a little rosé-y. Like when I look right at the bottle, it just look, it looks like a white wine, but it definitely has the slightest little like rose gold hue. Before I smell it, what I usually like in rosés is something a little savory, usually somewhere between like, um, like pepper and watermelon. Okay, all right, it's definitely got something savory in it. It's definitely stronger than the last Pinot Grigio we had on here as far as smell. It's almost meaty. <laughs> it smells maybe like, uh-oh, we're back in salty meat land and I remember where that went a couple <laughs> seasons ago. But it does, it has a savory smell to it. So I think I'm gonna like it. I don't, I'm not really getting a lot of fruit on it. If anything, like musty fruits, like kind of rotten fruit. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's give it a whirl. We'll taste it. Okay, it's definitely savory. The fruit in it is really, really mild, like kind of a little strawberry-ish, but like a really tart strawberry when they're not quite in season yet. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Maybe it's meat wine. Ooh. It definitely smells like it, but you can't taste the meat in the glass. But that's often how wines are for me. I smell like funky stuff in them, <laughs> like the meat. Yeah, I mean, it for sure smells like, this would, I, can you marinate in rosé? I don't even know, I mean, why wouldn't you? You can cook in wine, so cook in this. I would cook a meat in this. Okay, I like this. It's a little on the tart side, which I'm not usually really into tart, but it definitely has that savoriness of a rosé that I like. So that's cool. The cheeses that <laughs> me and the internet decided to put with this are Gouda and Feta. It's a Dutch Gouda, whatever that means. I don't know how that's different from any other Gouda, but that's what the package said. And then just Feta. I wanna go with the milder one first. I feel like the Feta is gonna be a little bit milder. I could be totally wrong, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. These are big chunks of feta that I cut. Why did I cut them so big? Okay, here it goes. We should open up a cheese store and call it Jesus Christ. Another reason not to cut a really big piece. <laughs> the awkward silence. Which allows me to speak. Yeah, which is, okay. So that was definitely salty, feta is salty. But when I swallowed it, it had a little bit of like a pungent kick to it, which isn't necessarily bad. Cheese can be pungent. Let's see what that did. Wow. Wow. That just changed it to like, like juicy, you know? The savoriness, which I do like, 
went way, way, way down, but now it's almost like an apple part came forward or some kind of, um, like, you know that sweet flavor of apple juice? Hmm. That's all right. That's pretty good. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Feta and Pinot Grigio Rosé is a yes. So now I'm going to move on to the Gouda and see what this does, my little Dutch Gouda. <laughs> Very buttery, creamy buttery. There's a little bit of salt, a little bit of like whatever that cheese funk is, you know? It's got the cheese funk. <laughs> totally different from the feta. Let's see what this does. Oh. Oh, this almost bought like a metallic taste out. Gross. I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people are into that. Let's see. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just different. It like that tartness or, or um, yeah, tartness, everything, savoriness went back up with this cheese, but then it introduced this other flavor. And the best thing I can say is metallic. Not bad, but I think the feta was a better pairing. So if I were to do this with hors d'oeuvres, I would do something with the feta camp. All right. So I'd like to do a little toast and I'd like this one to be about being authentic. You may have noticed my hair looks slightly different from previous episodes. Slightly? I mean, it's still long. But yeah, during quarantine, I thought, why am I gonna touch up my roots? I mean, I was a natural redhead at one point and then I was just touching up the roots. Well, it turns out the roots have gone completely white. This is natural, folks. Now, for like here down is not natural. Here down was whatever I did at home to match it. But this is my authentic self. So I would like to raise a glass to you and hope that during this strange, crazy time of being locked down and quarantined and at home more than usual and in sweatpants, which has been glorious, that you've been able to tap into some really authentic part of yourself and keep going with that because I think that's where our sweet spot is for all of us. So cheers. I like that wine. It's still good. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab.